Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign review, this time covering Malice Darkblade. So Malice Darkblade starts his campaign in the Northern Chaos Wastes at Black Rock, whereas previously in Mortal Empires he started in... So Mortal Empires in Warhammer 2, started at the Dragon Isles here, where uh, now Kugath is uh, starting his campaign. Now, in Warhammer 2, I wasn't overly fond of Malice Darkblade's campaign mechanic, because being full-possessed would cause uh, global penalties to uh, replenishment rate. Now, I have already uh, drank one bit of elixir. You do start off with it at 10. The reason why I did that is, while you are possessed, Zarkan will continuously like taunt you, and so I turned that off so I can actually get this video done. Uh, but normally, you wouldn't do this straight away, right? So in terms of his um, start uh, strategies, this is a little bit of a uh, difficult one for me, because I have played a Malice Darkblade campaign, and in fact it is the only faction that I've done a full map completion on. But it's a weird one, because that was the one I did it in one turn, the entire map in one turn, obviously using movement bugs. So, in terms of offering, like, a strategy and what to do first, I, I don't know, like, how much you want to cheese this game. But here's the big thing, it doesn't really matter. You don't really need a plan at the start of this, because Malice Darkblade is beyond broken OP in Total War Warhammer 3, because you can go full Sarkan, even if you've only got a little bit of possession. See, as you get more and more possessed, you'll cause more and more Slanesh corruption, which isn't that big of a deal at the start of the campaign, but it'll be a problem later on. Now, if you're just teetering on the edge here, you can still go Sarkan, although you'll have less ward save and melee attack, but it'll only cause uh, plus two corruption, which is very much manageable. If you go full uh, not possessed, you get some pretty significant growth bonuses and uh, and get rid of all the corruption. So staying in sort of this area here, if you don't want all that penalty, can be uh, quite beneficial. So this overall mechanic is a lot better than it was in uh, in Total War Warhammer 2. So that's that's really good. Now the thing is as well, I believe that when it comes to the possession mechanic, you'll be given some pretty powerful missions but you need to be at least somewhat possessed in order for those missions to occur. Now, you've also got this allow full possession, which will just immediately set you up to 10, uh, but you can only do that once every 40 turns. Typically speaking, you would do that if you're going into a really tough fight. Now, at the beginning of the campaign, Malice Darkblade is fully able to just one-man doomstack pretty much this entire area for quite some time, so you don't even really need your army. Uh, so... <laughs> It's not a difficult early game campaign. I think the challenge of it is going to be later on when you sort of crumble on, under your own weight with, of course, the slave mechanic not being very good. And, of course, managing whether or not to go full Tarkan or not is something that you need to seriously consider with each engagement. But starting off with a Black Ark as well also is a big benefit since Black Arcs are absolutely amazing at gaining slaves and just providing you with extra recruitment. This is honestly not that bad of a start area. Even though there's potential corruption in the area and maybe you'll have the odd revolt, typically speaking, the Dark Elves are going to have revolts anyway. And this is all green territory out this way, unlike Boris, who we'll get to eventually, who starts off in, you know, basically inhospitable territory. Uh, your nearby enemies is basically the Demon Prince, Daniel, uh, but I don't think the Demon Prince really stands a chance against you. You beat the absolute crap out of him. As long as you're fully possessed and can go full Zarkan, he just can't really touch you in the early stages of the campaign. And then if you go further west this way, because you can go east or west, and it's entirely up to you, or south, whatever you want. But if you go uh, further west, you can encounter Sigvold, and Sigvold's got a really good defeat trait for Malice Darkblade. So with this one here, I just don't really have a, you should do this in order to not have a difficult campaign. Because really, just do whatever you want. Malice Darkblade is basically unkillable, as long as you're at least somewhat able to full possess. You start off with a decent amount of money. This is fairly rich territory where you don't have to worry about enemies to the north. You can secure an empire fairly quickly, and you start off allied with Malekith, so at least you've got some way home. Oh, also, you start off with Hag Grief as well, but as soon as you capture one settlement, you'll be given a offer from from um, uh, Malekith to uh, sell off... No, no, not from Malekith, just from local lords to either sell off Hag Grief or keep it, and there's benefits and drawbacks to both. It, it's entirely up to you. But in Warhammer 2, it was quite difficult to manage a fragmented empire, but you're not actually that far away from 
had grief in your start position here. So it's quite viable to just hold on to it. And uh, most of the area out here is just ruins anyway, so you're not expecting loads of enemies. Although there are Skaven up this way, but they usually get smashed by Malekith. So holding on to Hag Grief in this campaign is definitely viable. Uh, overall, I'd say that this is an actually okay Dark Elf campaign. I, I am not fond of Dark Elves in Warhammer 3, but I'd say that the ones that I enjoy the most are actually Lockyer Felhart and Malice Darkblade. This is, like, not super fond of Dark Elves, but... If you're going to play Malice Darkblade in either, War either Warhammer 2 or Warhammer 3, I'd actually kind of recommend playing him on 3. It's not too bad. And if you want to conquer the entire world in one turn, I don't recommend doing that. I wanted to shoot myself in the head halfway through that. It was absolutely tedious. But if you want to just play through a regular campaign with Malice Darkblade, he's got enough mechanics to keep it interesting, and making him a one-man doomstack is kind of the main appeal to playing as him in the first place. And it's very much viable to do that. You've got very good defeat traits all around you. You know, Throt's not too far away. You've got Archeon, he's got another good defeat trait. And just getting him some really good items. All of that is uh, potential for an enjoyable campaign. Anyway, that's the end of this one here. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of Malice Darkblade's campaign in Warhammer 3, especially in compared to Warhammer 2. I really wasn't fond of it in Warhammer 2, but I'm okay with it in Warhammer 3. Um, appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Later.